One officer's knee pinned against Floyd's neck. Floyd's untimely death has sparked a movement that has transcended race and class, a movement that has even crossed international borders. Protesters are demanding justice for George Floyd and an end to social injustice. But where do we go from here and how do we affect real change? Good afternoon, I'm Brittany Johnson and thank you for joining us for an ABC4 News Special Town Hall, America in Pain, a Positive Path Forward. Now over the next hour, we're going to have a conversation about affecting real change. Now we want to have a meaningful dialogue discussing actionable steps Utahns can take that will lead to long-term solutions. So joining us today for this important discussion, we have Dr. Matt Harris, United States Marshal for the District of Utah and former criminal justice and public policy professor, Pastor Corey Hodges, lead pastor of the Point Church in Salt Lake City, and Kenny Akers, a military veteran who says he stands for peace and justice. Gentlemen, thank you for being here with us this afternoon. Thank you. All right, let's get right into this with our first question today. Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice. Unfortunately, this is not the first time a black American has been killed in a racially charged incident. But why has this particular tragedy, George Floyd, struck such a chord? We'll start with you, Pastor Corey. I think, thank you, Brittany, and, and good afternoon. I think um, the confluence of several events over the past 30 days have probably uh, brought some of the frustration to the surface. I think with the, um, the videotape that we saw of the young man jogging in Georgia, Aubrey, Aubrey I believe his name was. Um, I, I think the uh, Central Park Karen who called the police and, and, and alleged that uh, she was gonna call the police on this African American bird watcher. And then um, the horrific um, explicit tape um, of Floyd being murdered in the streets. Uh, and I think those three events brought together kind of, kind of triggered the reaction that we're seeing all over the country. It, it's difficult to look at that video. Um, and I think um, the video in and of itself, watching someone die, take their last breath, is probably what triggered um, such a reaction. All right, Kenny, your take on this. Yes, ma'am. Thank you as well, Pastor. Thanks for that. Um, I want to come from a position of love in regards to this. Um, we do have a lot of events that are happening time, 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 time and again. And I feel culturally what's happening amongst us is that we are reaching out with our hearts, we are reaching out with our souls, and we are trying to voice out what's happening in the positions that's happening right now, the overextension of police brutality and the mistreatment of certain individuals. We're trying to outreach and reach out to the citizens in regards to this. Um, it's impacted because we all feel this pain and, and, and this should be everybody's responsibility at this point. And Dr. Matt Harris, we'll go to you for the answer as well. Sure, um, let me talk about the, um, the unfortunate positive that had happened from this. Um, and I hate to say that, but law enforcement for the first time in my memory unilat uh, um, un unanimously went out and said this is wrong, this is callous, this is against our training. The uh, Attorney General opened a civil rights investigation as well. 18,000 police departments nationwide condemn this action. You have police officers all over this nation who have condemned that. And that's a positive step, first step, for this callous uh, nature of uh, Mr. Floyd, Mr. Floyd's death. I think the reason why it's become uh, such a big story, um, obviously, as the other two gentlemen on the panel had mentioned, is also because it's just very callous. Um, you see the officer, you see him on uh, the knee on the neck, and it's against all law enforcement training um, that, that were trained in the academy, and I've been doing this for 25 years. And this is a tough topic and a tough discussion for a lot of people to have. So how do we have meaningful conversations about race and racism? We'll start with you, Dr. Matt Harris. It's tough. Uh, this is a tough conversation. But it, like anything else in life, it's trust, it's compassion, it's understanding. 
we all have to understand that we all have our implicit bias. You start every conversation understanding that I'm biased. Everybody's biased based upon their own experiences, based upon their raised, based upon their relationships. And that's where it starts. And we have to realize that we will not always agree on the remedy. We will not always agree on the cause. But people need to be validated. They need their voices to be heard. They need understanding. And we need to have more uh, compassion. And we can't force people not to have opinions that they don't have. We have to teach each individual, one person at a time, one officer at a time, one member of the public at a time, and, and try to come to a common place and have an open dialogue about it. Okay, Kenny, I want to go to you for that question as well. Yeah, absolutely. I love the open dialogue. Just for the simple fact that um, friendships and relationships happen every day. I mean, we do this normally. Um, I mentioned this a little while back. I think we're complicating this more than we actually should be. Um, we should be looking at each other with our heart. We should be friendly with each other, and we shouldn't be crossing certain boundaries that we shouldn't be crossing. And we all know what they are and what we shouldn't be doing, and we should just be kind to each other and just step forward with our best foot forward and just love each other. Okay. And Pastor Hodges, uh, lead pastor of the Point Church, a multicultural church, um, how do we have these meaningful conversations, again, about race and racism? Yeah, I think, I think it's two things. One, uh, I agree with Kenny, it's relationships. That, 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 is, that is very important. And you have to be intentional. Intentional. Intentionality is a word that I've been using as, we've been having these convers as I've been having these conversations um, in the last few weeks. Uh, intentionality. You have to create friends that are not like you, that don't look like you, that don't think like you, they weren't raised like you. Um, and, and you have to go out of your way to, to, to create these relationships because our, our, our human nature wants us to gravitate to people who are like, who are like ourselves. And so we have to be intentional about creating authentic relationships where conversations um, can be had. Now, the other thing is empathy. Um, uh, and it's tough for you to have empathy uh, for someone if you cannot see their perspective. And you're not going to be able to see people's another perspective if you don't have an authentic relationship that is undergirding um, that empathy. The ability to feel someone else's pain. Um, and if you don't know someone else's story, um, if you can't relate to someone else's pain, then you cannot be empathetic. So I think, I think those are two very important things that, you, that we must have as part of this, this conversation, the ability to be intentional about our relationship circles so that we can, through our conversations and our education about our differences and our similarities, be able to exhibit and express empathy for our brothers and sisters. Now, we have some extra time here, so before we head to our break, I do want to follow up with you, Pastor Corey, and just ask, is it that simple? Where do people start that are just looking for a place to say, how do I start having this conversation? Yeah. Well, well for me, as a person of faith, you know, I, I think we follow, the, I follow the principles of the Bible. I was introduced to, to, to the Bible and to God and Christ through my parents, and, but everybody may not have that path. That's how I started understanding uh, the words that Jesus taught to love our fellow man. Um, but I think even if you're not a person of faith, uh, you can be a person of goodwill uh, that just have respect and you have love and concern for our, our fellow man. Um, we're all human. Um, and, and, and despite all of our differences, there are things uh, that we have in common that we can unite around. You know, some of, a lot of us are parents. We love our kids. We, uh, uh, we, we, so, so, so a lot of us love our, we love our country. Um, we, there are things that we can talk about that we have in common that can give us a, a greater ability to develop those relationships. So start with what do you have in common? Get to know somebody. What can we talk about um, that, that, that we have in common? That's a starting spot in my mind. All right, everyone, we are just getting started here. So much more coming up within our hour here. Still ahead, how can police departments and communities build better relationships? Our panel weighs in after the break.